welcome to my channel. Today we have a very special guest. We have the incredibly talented, amazing actor, singer, artist, businessman, icon. There's so many different ways I can describe him. Uh, Michele Morone from the hit movie 365 Days. Thank you so much Thank for you, being Mona. Thank on you. my channel. You're, you're, you're too kind with me. Too, too kind. You are too kind. Thank Honestly, you. I'm so happy to be sharing you with the world because I think that, you know, from getting to know you, you're so much more than what you're portrayed on 365 <laughs> Days. You're such a deep, amazing person. And I think, um, you know, it's just really cool to see somebody who has such a big persona have so many layers to you. So I'm really Thank excited. Thank you very much. I'm excited as well to be here with you. Thank uh, you. You know how much I appreciate you. And Thank you uh, so much. Just, just to tell everyone that we became good friends yeah. and uh, it's an amazing to be here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I'm so honored. Um, I would love if before we get started, if maybe you could describe Michele Moroni in a few words. Like, how would you describe yourself to the world? Well, in a few words, uh, I think uh, I think Michele Moroni is. It's like we're we're talking about someone who's you know like in years and a half ago was you know it was totally behind the scene. I was I was working as a gardener. Wow. And after the movie, uh, after the movie. All of this happens. So, if I want to describe me in a couple of words, I'm someone determined and loyal. That's, Probably, yeah. That's amazing. It's so crazy to think that you know, just a year and a half ago, you were working and hustling to make ends meet, and you know, in such a short time, you've yeah. exploded into a international superstar. Yeah. Um, and you still are so humble, which I really appreciate about you. Thank you very you much. Know, um, I mean, I, I I remember from where I come from, you know. So. Uh, and I don't think that you know being, I mean, like making be, like making yourself bigger in front of other people just make you smaller. You know what I mean? So, Absolutely, I completely agree with you. So do you still garden? Oh yeah, <laughs> you do yeah, yeah. <laughs> for yourself. Yeah, I got a house. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't hire a gardener. That's I'm just amazing. doing it by myself. No, I'm That's kidding. Great. It's too big the part. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need some tips from you. <laughs> <laughs> if you need That's to fix great. something, by the way, you I, can I need call to me. do a lot. <laughs> my garden is a mess. <laughs> so I like to start my podcast with a little game. It's a word association game. So when I say the word, if you could just share like what first comes to your head when you hear the word. All right. I'm just a little bit afraid of this, but let's do it. <laughs> Don't worry. They're all pretty kosher. All right. um, so the first one is 2020. Um, success. Success. Yeah. It's been a big year for you. Yeah. Success. Fantastic year for you. Fantastic. I, yeah. I and mean, although there was, you know, this problem with the virus, mm -hmm. uh, the, the COVID situation, but for me it was a totally, totally, I don't want to say lucky because lucky is not the right word because I worked hard for it. Yeah. So, uh, but it was a big success and, um, uh, everything happened after Netflix believed in the movie and put the movie in the platform, yeah. you know, so uh, we were in quarantine and my movie came, wow. came out, you know, came out on, on, on Netflix and everybody, everybody was lo in lockdown mm -hmm. and they had a lot of time to watch Netflix. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, good yeah. timing. Yeah, success. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's amazing. Um, tattoos. I know you have so many tattoos. Oh, yeah. Uh, tattoos for me are, just, uh, uh, I feel like myself as a book, you know, so everything, every every tattoo I have inked on my body has a story, so they're just like, like I'm the paper, yeah. and the tattoo are just the story of my life, you know. What's your most recent tattoo? Uh, most recent tattoos? <laughs> <laughs> if you can share, uh, if you can't, it's fine. <laughs> my most recent tattoo is this one. Oh, okay. Love it. Yeah. Do you like it? <laughs> I love it. You like it, right? I do. I love Thank it. You. It's beautiful. Yeah. No comment. <laughs> we'll save that for next time. <laughs> um, music. Uh, music is my freedom. I mean, through the music, I'm being totally myself. Yeah. I can express myself in any way. I mean, uh, if you listen at Dark Room, uh, I've I've made four soundtrack for 365 days. It's hard for me feel it. Watch me burn in dark room. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just expressing my what I have inside through the cinema, studying the psychology of a character. Yeah. For example, uh, Don Massimo Torricelli is just me being someone else. Mm. 
me studying psychology of someone else mm -hmm. which is very very interesting because through acting you can understand you, you, you can discover a lot of words yeah. words you know so music is freedom how did the songs come to you because I know you wrote a lot of you wrote a lot of the music for mm -hmm. the entire film um, yeah. I think it was mostly your songs oh yeah yeah uh, I mean uh, if we think about for example um, if we take a heart for me uh, I wanted to put down uh, the love story between uh, thinking about Massimo and Laura uh, I just wanted to talk about their love story you know so uh, taking sex scenes apart taking you know action scenes apart yeah. you know mafia just taking the movie you know focusing on the love between them yeah and that's how it came out that heart for me if we think about Watch Me Burn, it's much more rough, it's much mm. more strong, you know, yeah. and there's the action inside. Yeah. It's even a bit, a bit, you know, uh, sensual as a song, mm. you know. So there's love story and there's, uh, you know, a bit of spice inside. Mm. So um, that's how we, I, I just try to focus myself on one details mm -hmm. and make these details uh, alive, you know. That's amazing. We're going to get into music later on, but I definitely have a lot more questions oh, for you because I know how passionate you are. Let's do it. Um, Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. Harry Potter was the beginning, you know. Yeah. When I was 11 years old in 2001. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in 2001, I was 11 years old. And I watched for the first time this movie, which is, this movie changed my life. I mean, it's weird to see Massimo Torricelli talking about Harry Potter. You know? <laughs> it is a little bit, you know, it's different. But, it's, um, but you know, Mona, it's, it's the movie that, like, everything starts from, from in, inside me from that movie. Because yeah. after watching that movie, I fall in love with the acting. Wow. I thought that I could have, you know, I, I really wanted to live in a magical world. And how do you live in a magical world when you're actually living in, in a real world? Mm -hmm. Through cinema. Right. So at the beginning, I just wanted to make cinema because through the cinema, you could have, you know, just do and be whatever you want. Yeah. So the acting part came later on. Yeah. So Harry Potter is the magic, you know, the passion inside me. And it inspired you to get into acting, right? That's what oh, I read yeah. somewhere. Yeah. 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 Super yeah, cool. Yeah. I oh, I'm, I'm still a big fan of the movie. Here, really. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. Um, Gratitude. Maybe my dad, my mom, my parents, my family. Um, you know, my dad didn't really have the opportunity to teach me something when he was alive, alive because yeah. I was small and he wasn't really, uh, he, re he didn't really have the personality of a dad that sits in front of a child and he teaches something. Yeah. You know, he just used to live his life. Mm -hmm. So I have to thank a lot my dad and my mom because my dad taught me more by being dad than by him being alive. You know, my dad had problem with alcohol, with fight on the street with people, you know. Mm. So it, it wasn't an, a dad of an example, like, you know, like, like daddy, you know. <laughs> Dr. Daddy Cool? Daddy Cool, yeah. yeah. But it was more, it was more a personality, more closed in, like, you know, close you know cold yeah so by just growing up you know i just you know it teached me more <laughs> it's it's weird to sometimes, say it but sometimes yeah, yeah sometimes i feel like you know when you don't experience everything that you want with your families it makes you grateful for that because it teaches you to do better for yourself exactly yeah so also my mom for example when my dad passed away like she had to take care of four kids wow and uh, she did it alone by herself. Wow. And she third was a of all, woman. she was. Yeah. She's still a very strong woman. Yeah. And third of all, I, gratitude for me is uh, myself, because I, if I didn't believe in myself, if I didn't have, you know, passion, hobbies, you know, mm -hmm. if although I had passion, it was a long, hard road, you know, yeah. to get to my goals. And if I wasn't the man. I am, I couldn't make it. Because if you have a goal but if it, and you don't believe in yourself, you're never going to reach the goal. Yeah. Never. Mm 
No, absolutely. Never. And, you know, just seeing how much you've achieved in such a short period of time, it's really exactly. inspirational. You are, for example, for me, an example. Aww, because you me. started by nothing. Like, we were talking, me and you, last, yeah. last night. Yeah. We're talking about, you know, putting, like, by, your, by yourself, putting, actually... Um, the packaging. Mascara? Yeah, the, okay. the lashes. The yeah. lashes inside by yourself. Right. No. We used to get paper cuts. I remember I would I couldn't do my nails because I was just packaging thousands of lashes with there my we family. Go. There we go. Like you are an example. Yeah. So you, who better than you can understand me? You know what oh, I mean? Thank you. So, yeah. All right. So that was fun. Thank you for that, the game. Um, so next, I'd love to talk about you and your whole career and I'd love to know what came first music acting art because I know you do so many different things mm -hmm. what's your first passion well the, the actually the first first passion I had in my life was the music okay. because my sister uh, I had three sisters so since I was really young since I was a couple like a couple of months like this to make me sleep to make me calm down they used to put me you know you remember the be hat fun yeah, you know, <laughs> with the walk with the Walkman. Oh wow! Used with me, Julio, Michael Jackson, the Queen. You know, oh, just wow. to make me relax. So, were you a wild child growing up, like very energetic? Uh, yes, I was. Yeah. Yes, I was, <laughs> but I was very, very polite. You know. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, my dad and my mom used to kick my ass <laughs> straight away. Oh. So yeah, I think the first first passion I had in my life was actually yeah the music. music. But then, like by growing up. I discover I, I I've I don't remember that I ever had another passion in my life uh, except for acting and music. You know, ne never wanted to be anything else. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to be a lawyer, a doctor. Uh, I don't know what like. So you're into creating. Yeah. And expressing yeah, yourself. Yeah. And I used to. I remember I used to paint a lot. You know. And. Um, and you paint now, right? I saw your yeah, paintings. Like, yeah, I like to paint. Yeah, but they're, they're not they're not big paints, like they're not nice paints. But I think they're really nice. They're beautiful. Like have you sold your art yet? Uh, no. You I don't want to make business out of it. You should. You're so talented. Oh, thank you. Like I'm I mean, like a lot of people messages me on Instagram telling yeah. me, "Hey, do you sell your paints?" You like totally no. Should. Like, You're amazing. Well, we we, we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, so, yeah. But, but my, my paints are a bit like controversial. Like yeah, but that's some of them that's are the scary. Part of it, I think they're they're very like interesting. Like it grabs your attention, and you think, what was going through his mind when he made this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like my, like I, I I've painted a lot during the quarantine, mm -hmm. and actually it shows that I was during the quarantine. So. <laughs> we're in lockdown. And <laughs> yeah, we're in lockdown. Monster and yeah. demons and yeah. naked women's with the <laughs> demon face. You know, like. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Man? I saw so. that one. <laughs> it's cool though. Yeah, I mean, it, like it's I, 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 I like them. Yeah. I like them. They're you know. different, and I think that's the beauty of art yeah. when you find something different, original, authentic. But, but, but you know, like once I was in the, in the, during the quarantine, I was you know uh, making a video call with my mom. I'm like, hey mom, you know, I'm painting yeah. something. You know, oh come on, let me see. It. Hey, it, she she thought that it was flowers or <laughs> I know you know teddy bears. You know, like and I showed her like. A naked woman with an evil face, you know. <laughs> She's like, why, why? Like, oh, what no. the fuck is this? Can you please calm down? It's so funny. <laughs> so, so she didn't want it. She didn't nah, ask she, she, it. She, 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 she doesn't really like my pants. No, right? no. <laughs> I think I think they're super cool. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Very yeah, much. no, you're amazing. Appreciate. It. Um, so I'd love to get into what everybody talks about. Three Six Five, the mm -hmm. movie. You know, when they first approach you with the script, like, what were your thoughts? How did you feel? Uh, when I first appreciated the script, I was like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> they sent me the script from the agency, you know, okay, three, six, five days, okay, nice, you're at Massimo, because before going into the script, I read, you know, um, you know, who is Massimo Torricioli? You have to uh, be him. Mm -hmm. And I went, okay, Massimo Torricelli is a mafia boss. He has sexual addiction. He's, like, <laughs> he's very rough. He, he never laughed. He never like, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so let's do it. So once I finished to read the characteristic of the character, I, I went into the script and mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, <laughs> so let, okay, let, let, let me just try to do yeah. it. You know? But um, I was, I, I was, it was an amazing moment because yeah. back at the time I used to, like I used to have depression, 
So that script is so important. Like that movie was so important to me because, like through the script, I had the time to not think about myself, right. not think about my problems, but wow. just being someone else and focusing mm -hmm. on being someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, although he was, you know, it was a tough guy. It yeah. was, you know, Massimo is. He became one of my best friends, by the way. But <laughs> you know, now is like he's, he's a good friend. Sometimes I talk to him. Really? But he never laughs. You know? <laughs> so, oh my gosh, that's funny. I need to make yeah. another character for myself. Too. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I wake up. It's a good idea. You know, someone tell me, "Are you lost, baby girl?" Like, <laughs> like, who is that? That's funny. No, he became a good friend, but in the same time, like the script was so so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I could have, like, it was an like an opportunity to me. Mm -hmm. You know. Did any part of you think maybe I shouldn't do this or I don't feel comfortable? No. Or did you instantly feel like never, connected? Never, never. Like mm -hmm. I, I, like straight away. Like I, I, I just accepted the mm -hmm. job, and uh, the director was super, super happy. And uh, they took me for this movie, and they didn't even costing me. Wow! They didn't make me a cost. That is bold. so. I was talking to him like, listen, Thomas, man, this mm -hmm. became a one. Of, my good friend, wow. the director is like, listen, you don't even know if I'm a good actor or not. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care. I, I, I see your face. I see your personality. I can, you know, yeah. I can manage it. Yeah. You know, I can take out things from you. Mm. So he took me straight away and um, I went to Poland and, you know, there was three girls. Uh, one of them was Anna Maria Szeklutska. Yeah. Laura <laughs> and the man made the costume with the other girl, but the oh, costume wow. was so funny. <laughs> what did they have you because do? Because the only thing that I wanted to do with them, it was just go on set, they open a like, rolling, check, action, you just have to kiss them. No way. <laughs> that was the so test? That was the test. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So it was weird. Yeah. The first time in my life I made the costume, like, just kiss. Like, That's so funny. Why? Yeah, <laughs> they wanted to so see the was, reaction. Yeah, there was connection with yeah, Anna, and yeah. you know. Did any part of you feel like, like, did your intuition tell you this was going to be the biggest thing for you? See, uh, I I had a feeling inside me because you know, three six five is based on a novel. It's based mm -hmm. on a book. Mm -hmm. There's three six five one, two and three part. There's three parts. Oh, it's a book. I didn't know that. Yes, it's based on a book. Oh, I didn't know that. It's based like on Harry a book Potter. of uh, <laughs> like Harry Potter. It's exactly. so funny. Exactly. But Massimo has a gun, he doesn't have you know. <laughs> a wand. <laughs> so the thing is that um, I felt something because in Poland, is mm. the, is it, this is a book based on the novel of uh, Blanka Lipinska. Mm. And in Poland, it's like the best seller since one year. Oh, wow. So people love that, that book. So I thought like, you know. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't know there was I mean, thing. I thought like, okay, it can be something yeah. in Poland. Mm -hmm. But in Poland, that's it. So once I got a call, you know, hey Mickey, you know that Netflix got the rights of the of the movie and they want to put it on, you know, on the platform worldwide. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, uh, wow. Then I had the vibe inside because <laughs> like this is gonna be something. By huge. the way, the movie was uh, <clears throat> like was in the first place in Saudi Arabia. I I don't I don't I don't <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> you know, in Saudi Arabia yeah, and Dubai. And so uh, <laughs> so for me is. Uh, and today, Forbes, there's an article of Forbes that said that um, 365 is the most uh, the most famous movie on the on the platform, Netflix. So yeah, I'm not surprised either. I think every single person that I know told me to watch it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Did you watch it? Yes, I watched oh, okay. it <laughs> quite a few times. Um, but yeah, did you like it? Was, it? Yeah, I did. What was your favorite scene? <laughs> Maybe we're not gonna comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was the, the, the part of the shoot. Yeah. That's the part, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, it's definitely, I think it was the movie of the year for sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, no, we're about to start the second part. Yeah. In May, we're going to start shooting. Even, be wow. even if be before I have to start shooting another mm -hmm. another series of also for Netflix original. Oh, wow. Uh, so you have quite a few projects in the line. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So you're doing 365 Part 2. Yeah. And another series. Another series also for Netflix original. I'm going to be a main character of uh, the second series of... Something else. Yeah, something else, but I can't say Damn because... It, I really want to know. <laughs> I'll tell you later. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, That's so um, exciting. Yeah, it's a, I tell you that it's a Spanish series. Okay. It's a very Are you famous... speaking in Spanish? I'm speaking in Spanish. Wow. It's a very 
famous Spanish series. Wow. They got me for the new main character. And is it a very different character to Massimo or similar? Or you to be it? honest, um, it's different. Yeah, different. it's different. Okay. It's different because, oh. let's see, Massimo is more elegant. Mm. You know, even when he gets angry, it's, it's an elegant guy. You know, yeah. So it's, it's, it's like elegant you do. Yeah. yeah. I have to go back. You know, studying back Massimo because he went out from me like, <laughs> totally. Like, like, <laughs> I'm sure you can switch it on. No, so. Um, so what would what would you say is your dream role? <sighs> like any movie, any series, anything, even if it's never. You been want me to be before. honest? Yeah. I really, in my career, like for me, uh, acting, it means it, it's a challenge with mm -hmm. yourself, you know? Yeah. So for me, acting is not being beautiful or strong in front of a camera. Mm. For me, acting, uh, like in 2018, I was acting a part of a guy who was a drug addict and I lost nine kilograms. You had to lose nine kilos? I had to. So I because can't do that I, to save my life. no, because I went to I went to the casting and the yeah. director told me like you're very good wow. at what you're doing, but when I see you, you look like a superhero. Mm. Like okay, you give me the contract and I come on set in two weeks. I'm gonna lose ten kilograms. Wow. I write on set and I had nine kilograms less. Wow. So for me, so tough. it is. Yeah. I stayed so I, like I was just eating boiled vegetable for like a month were you like exercising like crazy too or? no 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 at all nothing because if i exercise you i get muscle i get muscle mm -hmm. like if i don't do anything i become like like then then mm. so exactly like i was telling you like like a dream role is like to show the people that i'm not only a mafia guy but why not like for example act the part of a transgender, for example. Wow, you would Psychology, do that? I'd love to. Wow. Psychology of someone who, you know, who has this deep personality, you know. Wow. Or being, you know, I don't know, someone who has issues, like for example, an handicapped guy mm -hmm. who cannot hear, you cannot talk. But for example, for me, acting in a movie where I can't talk because I'm, I'm, I'm speechless, mm -hmm. Uh, it's a it's a, it's an important you know challenge with myself because through my eyes I can show the acting part you right. know what I mean. So, so you like the awesome. challenge because that would be so hard. Yeah, because it's I mean like it's easy to to be a lawyer, or be a doctor or you know. so I would like to take part of a movie, take part acting a character that is totally different from my personality. Mm. That's the challenge for me. Hmm. Interesting. That's mm. um. It's brave. I, I don't. I mean, I could. I don't think I could act at all. Like I'm just a terrible actress. I'm sure you can. I don't think so. I can't even act in real life. Like even when I want to pretend I'm something else, I'm like. I think everybody. I can't fake it. Everybody can act. Really? Because we are. We are people. We are mm -hmm. human being. We have emotion. I need to work on and that. And exactly, acting yeah. is just about you know think like make and make a scene like become real, like feeling something for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you're very emotional. I can tell, which is nice. It's like you're expressive. Oh, thank you. I think I'm emotional, but I'm not expressive. Like I hold everything in, so. But that's the, the that's the, like, not being ex expressive is an expression. Oh God, it's a horrible one though. I mean, like for example, me, when I, when I feel so, so angry mm. or I feel so sad, mm -hmm. most of the people cry. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> me, it's very difficult for me to cry, all right? Really, okay. But this doesn't mean that I'm not sad. Mm. So, uh, a lot of people say that, that you're a good actor if you can cry you're a good actor mm -hmm. but this is not true yeah. because I like just I can just be passive and I can like, make you feel that I'm sad and r really like like I'm fucking sad I, I want to die now but not without tears you know right. hmm, interesting I want to know about fame because mm -hmm. fame is it can either make somebody, it can break somebody, it can make them the nicest person, it can make them the most evil person. You went from having how many followers on Instagram? Forty thousand followers before the movie uh, launched. The night, the night before the movie was launched on Instagram, I had forty-eight thousand. Forty-eight thousand followers, they, and now they, you have eleven million plus, growing very fast every yeah. single day. That's insane. Like I don't think I've ever seen such growth ever. I remember the, the night that the movie was put in on. Uh, was releasing on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I went to sleep. As I told you, I had 40, 48,000 followers. I woke up 
and my Instagram, I, I tried to open the Instagram <laughs> and it wasn't opening. Oh my God. I'm like, well, why? So I tried to delete and try yeah. to, and, and I, I opened it again. There was 2.1 million. Wow. Like, what the fuck? You know, that is insane. Yeah. I That's went probably outside. probably the fastest growth that Instagram's ever seen. I'm imagining like 48,000 to 2.1 million. I had, I, had, I had with Instagram a lot of problems because I couldn't open my my DM wow. because it was cracking all the time. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't want to so, know what you got in your DM. <laughs> but it was funny, Mona, because okay, I'm like, okay, 2.1 million. Yeah. Fine. Okay. I'm just, yeah. I remember the first day the movie was on Netflix. I, I went to take, I took a shower and you know, I just wanted to have, go have coffee because yeah. in Italy we have these things. We go have a coffee in the morning. And I went out and there was people that was starting to look at me like, was this in your house or where in you? Rome? In I just Rome. went okay. out from my house, just in a bar to have oh a coffee gosh. because and people we already could. knew who you were. As people were starting to look at me, and uh, I didn't really know because okay, there was a movie, and mm -hmm. I didn't really know what why the other people. So I was trying to see if I had something, <laughs> if I had the I don't know, a, a big a big black <laughs> burger on the face, right? But yeah. then I realized that they you know, like recognized you. Yeah. So for me, um, you know, I do get recognized, of course, not even probably 5% of what you get recognized, but people know me when I go out, but that grew so slowly. Like literally it was like maybe a couple, you know, 100,000 every year. So it didn't grow overnight, but how did you maintain your humility and just the person you are without letting it get to you? <laughs> because I didn't have time to, to, to understand. You know, maybe when, when you but have... it's been a long time. It's been what, more than six months since you've been a huge sensation. No, no, no. I mean, like, you know, w w like to me, it happened in one night. Everything started in one night, you know. Like, I didn't really have the time to realize what happened, you know, mm. because I woke up mm -hmm. and I couldn't walk anymore in the street. And know what? Ah, okay. Yeah. And then you walk. And then after, I don't know, 400 meters, someone else. Right. I couldn't walk anymore. Wow. So the thing is that, like, I don't know what to say, you know, like, it was, it was so, it, it was so weird. Like, not now I got used to, you know, when yeah. I go out, it's, it's okay, like, fine. But at the beginning, it was like, oh, imagine you going out with, I don't know, a lot of people in the square looking at you. Mm -hmm. Like, am, am I doing something wrong? Right. So, yeah, the fame. And do you do you like it or do you does part of you wish you didn't have it? Oh like no! Do you no. miss being able to go out and do normal no, no, things? No, I'm, I'm not nagging at all about it because <laughs> you know you know like people they recognize like if I was if I killed someone and people recognize me because I killed someone, you know, it was it was tough. Right. But, you know people they recognize me because I've done a movie and they they love the movie. Right. And they they you know they they, they like to see you and. and giving you compliments, mm -hmm. you know, picture, autograph. Yeah. So I think that as an artist, we shouldn't really, you know, uh, because when we're nobody, we want to be somebody. When we're somebody, we wish we don't, we want, don't want to be anyone, you know. So yeah. the thing is, uh, there's a lot of problem in the world and in our lives. So this is, this is not absolutely a problem. I mean. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I get angry. Sometimes the only thing that I, you know, let me tell you, when I got angry because, for example, there was a bunch of paparazzi going with the big camera oh, in wow. front of the face of my son. Oh my gosh! So yeah, that like as soon as we they're talking about me, I can have a bunch. I have paparazzi every day. Wow! But when they like when they run after my son, my kids, or you know. And my son actually start crying because he's afraid because oh, no. of course my son didn't watch the movie right so like my son is like dad what's going on and i'm telling you like you know dad made this movie the music and stuff so he's is people knows him mm -hmm. so but he doesn't really get yeah like <laughs> now he's starting to get because for example this this, this summer i was in greece with him and he said, and there we go again Dad, there's people here with the cameras. What we do? Do we do? So I'm starting like to kind of playing with them, you know. Right. But in Greece, he got scared because there was a bunch of uh, girls running after, and uh, and it was okay for me. Mm -hmm. But they, they they went to him with the camera in front, oh, and no, and, the, and the and the and Marcus got very very scared. Yeah. Like you know, 
like this, no? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely tough. Um, no, because he doesn't really understand why. No. His I think dad it's so is famous, hard yeah. for children to to have that. I think you know for Nora as well when she used to go out with us. I mean, we don't really go out much anymore, but when we started going out and people started recognizing mm -hmm, us, mm -hmm. Huda started chasing us for photos, she used to cry. She was like, why would they leave us alone? It was, it was so hard for mm -hmm. her, so I totally get it. It's it's definitely mm -hmm. like a, a tough transition. Yeah, because he sees his dad, for example, mm -hmm. like not being no one, going right. on the street normally, like right. we cannot do a lot of stuff yeah. anymore. Like, in, you know, yeah. like it's okay, but yeah. you know, I just would like to have a normal, you know, just take Marcus to a park. Right. But the people, they just really, they really love the movie. So. Right. So. <laughs> well, you did a great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so now I'd like to go back into music. I know we All touched right. up on that. Um, lovely topic. Lovely, lovely topic. I know you had an incredible soundtrack for the movie, um, The Dark Room, and mm -hmm. you also wrote the song Feel It, which is amazing. You have over 45 million views already, mm -hmm. um, which is incredible for a new actor and a new singer. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel like what makes you write songs and music like how do you get inspired see like for me inspiration for the music is just you know it's something incredibly i, I don't get inspired by okay you know now i go and i sit and i get inspired like i just i can get inspired but even now that we're talking me and you yeah, uh, like you know, <laughs> it's gonna make a song. <laughs> so for me, inspiration is something like that I can't control because mm -hmm. it's inside me, mm -hmm. and she decided when she wants to go out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she comes out she? every day. I Some like that. Yeah. 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 My inspiration. <laughs> yeah. It's a she for sure. That's nice. It's a she for <laughs> I'm a sure. Total feminist. So yeah. 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 It's a she for That's sure. Good. So. There's no. There's nothing that I do to get inspired. To be honest, yeah. like I just live my life. And of course, when I, when I'm about to work on the album, for example, now I'm working on the second album. Wow, that's yeah. great. And what is it about? Is it for the new movie or is it for something else? Um, no, no, no. It's just, just like it's just my music career. Okay. It's nothing related to the movie. But I would love to put one of the songs inside the second part of 365 yeah. Days because I, I really think that it can fit inside the second mm -hmm. part. No, oh, that's exciting. It is. Now I it really is. want to hear it. I want to know what it's about. It's amazing. <laughs> it's an amazing song. You just show me off, I, I, off I camera. I wrote three songs, and I think that they're more mature. They mm -hmm. have more sense of you know humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, and you write all your songs. I remember you were mm -hmm. telling me that before. That's yes. so impressive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because it's off. pretty rare nowadays to see someone do everything on their own. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's a nice work. Mm -hmm. Uh, before starting writing Darkroom, I didn't know I could have write yeah. uh, a song. So that's why, you know, like, unless you don't try to do something. Did you write you never like poetry know. before or anything yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I'm always wanted to, you know, always wanted to write something in my mm. life. I've read a lot of things. Mm. I've wrote a lot of things, so, yeah. Yeah, and I heard you, um, I read that you taught yourself how to play the guitar. From yeah. YouTube. <laughs> I was in 2000, I don't know, 13, 14. I started mm -hmm. uh, with YouTube, you know. Wow. I, just, I really wanted to start, you know. So just cool. I'm not a guitar player, let's be honest. But I've seen you, know, you play on social. You do a good job. Yeah, I mean, I'm odd. I think you do good. <laughs> normal, no, Give normal yourself thing. credit. You do normal really thing. well. Yeah, I you. can't do anything. I've had a guitar for 15 years. So I don't <laughs> even, it has rust on okay, it. Okay, from tomorrow we're gonna start taking <laughs> okay, lessons. Okay, done. Do it, me. Done, please. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And do you have any um, role models in the music industry? Like, is there anybody who's inspired you? Uh, of course, there's like, like there's a lot of people that I appreciate. Like, for example. Uh, Beatles, Queen, Sam Smith, Billie Eilish, uh, mm -hmm. like we're going to yeah. a war with the other. Mm -hmm. But, uh, um, uh, so I, I've got a lot of, uh, you know, a, how can I say, a lot of example inside myself. Yeah. Uh, since I was young, even mm -hmm. the hip hop on, of two, the early 2000 mm -hmm. is an amazing, is an amazing music. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't really have an artist that I got inspired to. You know, okay. so yeah, because I always trying to be, you know, as much as uh, 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 original I can. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Is there anyone that you would dream to collaborate with uh, in of music? Of course. There's, I know, there's, like, for example, I love the music of Sam Smith. Mm -hmm. I love That's the music amazing. of Billie Eilish, for mm -hmm. example, Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm sure we'll see something soon. I'm pretty <laughs> sure about it. And I'm excited sure for that. <laughs> so the next topic I want to talk about is something uh, that we share in common. Mm -hmm. I know you are a perfume lover. Mm -hmm. um, you're obsessed with perfume. If yeah. you could tell me, you know, where did that obsession come from? Like, what makes you love perfume so much? I've read also a story, a script, that I once, I, I once the script to become a movie. Uh, a story based on a photo reporter that falls in love with a woman just by smelling his perfume. Mm. That's, I don't know why, it's why I have this inside of me. I'm totally like uh, obsessed with smells, mm -hmm. even the people's smells. Me too. <laughs> I, I, yeah, of course. <laughs> so I can recognize a, a person by her smells, not wow. by her perfume, mm -hmm. by her smells. So I really thought that I could have, you know, um, make become this passion a business why not mm -hmm. so i'm working on on a project that we're that i'm having in dubai so exciting with the very very <laughs> beautiful and strong people that's that amazing. they know more than me that's mm -hmm. why i'm in their hand yeah because if i want to do something good mm -hmm. i really think that i should work with people that they know more than me yeah you know, so. i completely agree with that yeah um what what was your first perfume you ever wore? Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. That's a nice question. <laughs> I think uh, when I was oh my god, wait, when I was fourteen, fifteen, I used to wear like Armani spray. coat. Oh, that was so popular. Yeah, that Armani coat. One. Yeah, Armani coat. Yeah, but then I, I completely changed my mm. my taste. You mm. know? Now I, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't make me. What did you wear on 365? Everybody That's another question. <laughs> um, did you wear perfume? In 365... You're too busy. No, I know, I know, I know. I, I have Le Défile. Um, Le Défile. It's, uh, it's, uh, it was based one. on uh, incense. Mm, incense. I love incense. I love incense. Yeah, same. Out and so incense beautiful. together. Mm. So, yeah, I don't really remember the name. Mm -hmm. But it was a perfume that I bought in Poland. Oh, nice. I love the weird... Actually, like... I'll tell you something. In Poland, there's a shop that you can go in and make your own perfume. Wow. It's called Number 69, I think, this oh, okay. shop. So you can go in, you tell, I like this, I like this, and then they mix. I love that. And they give stuff. it to you. It's like an oil. That's and so that's nice. what I used to wear. That's so nice. We have a lot of that here in Dubai. Yeah. Like those little shops where you go, you mix your oils together. Really? I, yeah. I, I really want to go there. Yeah. Really, really, uh, that's my next yeah. shop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dubai, honestly, is like, for me, a perfume lover's heaven. Mm -hmm. There's so many perfume shops mm -hmm. and markets and so many things. So I'm, I'm really excited for your brand. No, 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 no. Really, I'm really working hard on the brand. And uh, yeah, I really, I really hope that this girl that I'm uh, asking <laughs> a collaboration of, she's going to tell me yes, because, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could capture any scent in a bottle, like anything, it doesn't mean it could be even an, an, an experience, a time in a bottle, what would it be? To be honest, like uh, there's a very beautiful uh, memory I have mm. of me because when, when I was young, I used to go with my dad in the south of Italy next to the sea, next mm. to the beach. There was nobody mm. because we used to go there uh, at... Um, uh, at early morning, mm -hmm. around five, six, yeah. there wasn't anybody. There was only, you know, uh, the fishing man you know, taking out the fish and stuff. So I remember me and my dad there uh, smelling the the salt mm -hmm. of the sea in the air. Oh, that's nice. So that that memory is so strong inside mm -hmm. myself. And if I could have put this in the bottle, it was that. Wow, that's yeah. so nice. Yeah. Wow. That's nice. Um, what type of scent are you attracted to? I know you mentioned incense, oud. Like, would you say you're mm -hmm. more attracted to like the woody types? I'm really attracted to uh, incense. 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 Yeah. yeah. What's your thing? Incense mixing. 
mixed to salt, I don't know why. Mm, salt, maybe from the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah probably, yeah, probably. But incense is, is, is my type. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I want to move on to something fun. Yeah. Dubai, because you've been spending a lot of time in Dubai. Yeah. It's your second home, right? It's, it became my second home. And like, how do you feel about Dubai? I mean, is it? Would you say it's your favorite city now? Oh, right now I'm I'm hiding myself in Dubai because <laughs> there's there's a very we have a lot of cases in in Italy. Right. We're yeah. over forty thousand cases every day. Yes, wow. there was thirty seven cases. Oh my gosh! So I, I decided to come back to Dubai mm-hmm. so I can you know I'm I can focus on my work, on my right. script, on my music. Mm-hmm. On my project, because right. by the way, the perfume project is is going to be here mm-hmm. in in the Middle East in yeah. Dubai, mm-hmm. so I can work in a you know in a comfortable way from here. Yeah. And then I love the place. I mean, I love the food. I love the the everything of, of this Was place. Was it the first time? Like, did you just recently come here for the first time, or did you come here before the movie? Uh, no, no, no. It was the first time. Was it was the first time, time was in July or July? June. Oh, I don't okay. really remember. That. So it's you're new to Dubai. I'm new to Dubai. And you love it. Yeah, yeah. I've never been here. I always you know, look at the picture of mm-hmm. Dubai, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, always wanted to have the, you know, the the, the curiosity to yeah. come here, but I never did yeah. before. And it's amazing because I know now you're the face of Guess and yeah. so many other amazing brands. Yeah. But you actually had them do the campaign in Dubai. Yeah, because so cool. at the beginning, we wanted to, they wanted to make the campaign in, uh, in Italy. Mm-hmm. But then I, I started, you know, and then we had the, the problem of the virus in, in Italy, so yeah. we couldn't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, guys, Dubai is an amazing <laughs> city. We can do the campaign yeah. here. So then Paul Marchand and I agreed, and so they cool. all moved here to make the campaign. And we That's made amazing. an amazing job. I love the photos of the falcon and oh, yeah, it was the amazing. desert. Yeah. Was it your first time holding a fal- falcon? Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, it they're was. scary. Yeah, <laughs> you were they, scared. Oh, they actually told me if you want, you can take out their cap. Oh and gosh, like, you can keep the cap. You know, <laughs> the falcon can yeah, keep the cap. Yeah, they're terrifying. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and it's not. It's a little bit heavy. Yeah, because when you when you grab them. Yeah, and it's sitting. And actually, Strong. I was taking him in and certain ways like. <laughs> He looked at you. He looked at me. Oh, no. Although he couldn't see me. I'm oh, like, good. The fuck are you looking at me? I don't want to look at you. So funny. Wow. It's just a picture, okay? Yeah, I don't like totally. you. I was with the, with the falcon here. Yeah. Hey, listen, I don't like you. You don't like me. We just have to take a picture. Yeah, that's amazing, though. Um, and have you learned any Arabic in Dubai? A kid. <laughs> kid. Oh, I love it. Kid. And the back, that's Arabic. Great. Oh my God, your Arabic's probably better than mine. Oh, voila, well, kid. Well, it's just impressive. a kid, you know. <laughs> we, can just, we can just say I a kid. I have like first grader Arabic. I don't speak Arabic. Wow, that's amazing. But Arabic is Lebanese. So you lived in Lebanon before, right? I lived in Lebanon because my ex-wife, uh, she's Lebanese. And so, how long did you live there? Um, I went up and forth for like eight years. Wow. But I lived there when uh, when she was pregnant with my first son. Mm-hmm. We had to be there because she wanted to deliver then. And she right. wanted her, her family to be next to her. Mm-hmm. It was in 2014. Wow. So I stayed there for, uh, you know, a, a good period. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so that's where you get all the Arabic from. Yeah. You're so good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. أنا ما أقدر أكلم زين يعني مكسر. but you don't really. مخبوطة. every every accent blended together. it's like because you're a mix of a lot of combination inside you. well yeah I don't know. I'm a confused child. really I don't know where I'm from. um I don't know. yeah but you like it here you feel like it's home. yeah. you I feel like you're at home here like when I see you you feel like I feel like you live here. Yeah. <laughs> You're so calm. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I still have to learn a lot of roads. Yeah. People but the fact is that I've just got a house in Italy okay, that wow. I really love. It was the house of my dream. Yeah. With a big park, yeah. big house. Yeah. So nice. And I'm not living there because oh. of the virus. So <laughs> <laughs> I really miss that. I really miss that really? house. Really miss that house. Aww. I really, I can. I wish I can spend time there. I know. Hopefully, things will get better. Soon. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to get into business because mm-hmm. I know you're doing a lot and that's also one reason you came to Dubai, you're a partner in Hella High, yeah. which is a really cool app where you can request um, shout outs and mm-hmm. things like that, which is so cool. Congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. It's an, um, an amazing idea of Sarah Al-Madani. Yes. 
Uh, One of my best friends. <laughs> my best friend. Sarah, she has an incredible personality. Mm. She she's, does. She's so attractive. Um, thinking about the business, she's mm-hmm. so smart and intelligent. Yeah. She's, um, she's, she's really thing. creative. Because yeah. to think about an app like that, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would never come out with this idea, you know, so... Um, no, it's so cool. And yeah. honestly, I mean, I, I've said this before on my channel, but she was my first friend in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's the reason why I'm still here, because I was about to leave. I was like, I am out. Yeah, she, <laughs> but yeah, she like, yeah, convinced she told me, me to stay. She told me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's she the reason me. why I've got part in, in this in this idea of al yeah. yeah. So when I first met her mm-hmm. through Zoom, mm-hmm. like, she, uh, like to be honest, before al another Indian app similar like that, they okay. offered me to be part of them, to be oh, their wow. face. Oh. But I'm like, I, I don't know why, I don't know. I didn't feel to be inside. Mm. So once uh, they organized the meeting between me and Sara yeah. and my manager, uh, you know, I, I quickly decided, yeah. you know, to, to get part of it because Great. there were a bunch of, uh, you know, young guys mm-hmm. who were so into it. So I'm like, you know, why not? Yeah. Why? Should and I believe in this unicorn. Yeah, so. I think it's definitely a unicorn. I'm on the app too. Oh really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I didn't know. About um, it. Yeah, I'm on the app. You can book a shout out if you like. <laughs> can I book you one? Sure. Okay. <laughs> what is what is the weirdest shout out request you got? <laughs> I'm dying to know because I didn't get any weird ones yet. I don't know, sometimes I I get some just I, I get message that doesn't mean anything. Really? They're just sending you money. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> <laughs> basically <laughs> basically if we want to see so it like funny. this uh or the weirdest request is i i don't know most of them they just they they ask for requests to you know um they ask you to say like are you things, lost baby girl are you lost baby girl it's like it's the topic of the day <laughs> like ev- so in every message there's uh, are you lost baby girl that's so funny but um i thought so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I try not to say it too much because mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to. I, I don't want this sentence to become define like, you. You know, to no, define me. Of course, me. Yeah. 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 Um, I know you also launched another really cool business uh, recently. Um, I don't, I don't want to say it incorrectly. Arum Roma. Is that Arum Roma? Yeah. I opened a business uh, called uh, a brand called Arum Roma, <clears throat> which is. Uh, it's a brand dedicated to all the women. Mm-hmm. Uh, I designed swimsuit and kimonos for women. Super cool. And uh, we're doing fine. We're That's doing great. fine. Uh, it, although it's you know it's not anymore time to go to the beach, you know. So we're trying to reinvent some stuff, some some project that we can you know mm-hmm. uh, put on the market. The patterns also. are beautiful. Thank you. So beautiful. They they are very Italian. Thank you. Like I think were you inspired by your Italian? Yeah, everything heritage? is made in Italy. Yeah, uh, yeah. You can tell. Everything is inspired on the whole mm-hmm. Romance women's. Okay. So the way they used to to wear yeah. uh, clothes, uh, also kimonos mm-hmm. and stuff. So. Uh, we we were doing well, but now in Corona time is n- it's not that easy. Right. Um, and especially is b- because you know we're not anymore in the summertime, right. so we're trying to renew some projects, mm-hmm. you know, to put on the market everything that can be afford like everything can be sold right. and sold in yeah. during this time. You know? Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. But they're beautiful. I'm sure once it's summertime again and yeah, there's no you. more COVID, hopefully, you thank know, you fingers very crossed. Much. I think people are gonna revenge. Party and revenge. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, 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 really hope so. I really hope so. <laughs> I'm going to be out there for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. Are you thinking about doing men's collection as well? Uh, for now, no. Mm-hmm. But never say never because mm-hmm. I, I, I really want to focus on uh, on the unisex part mm-hmm. on my perfume okay. project. So uh, for now, I'm just on with autumn. I'm just focusing on on the women. Yeah. But with the perfume. I want to do something unisex. That's cool. Which is more near men's. Totally. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know if it's because I've lived here for so long, and in the Middle East, everybody wears everything. Like, a man will wear women's pra- mm-hmm. fragrance, a yeah. woman will wear man's. So I feel like fragrance should be unisex. Of course, absolutely. It should have yeah. a gender. Like, absolutely, why should yeah. it have a gender? If you want to wear a rose and you're a man, wear a rose. Yeah, yeah, who cares? I mean, <laughs> Make it your own. Who cares? Yeah, because we, we, we live in a world that has too much, you know, um, how can I say... Lines. Help they me. want to put Lines. you in a box. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They want to put everything man in a box. is for like, man. No, is for, like I, I, I'm really like traditional as well. Like mm-hmm. uh, I like to wear pants. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
But talking about perfume is something that you cannot see, but you can feel. Absolutely. So why not? And I see your li- your eyes light up when we talk about perfume. Yeah. Yeah. When we talk about <laughs> perfume, I, I get so excited. Yeah, I can tell. Because for a, for a little bit of time, I was a bit um, like the perfume wasn't going, you know, it was, it was not going. So I was a bit feeling down. Yeah. But now, like... We have a new project. We yes. have new people. We're mm. stronger than before, yeah. and I think that we can we can do an amazing yeah. job. You know, Mona. I'm sure it will be an amazing yeah. project for sure. Yeah, yeah You know, for me, it took over ten years. Yeah, well. Yeah, like the first well, eight years, eight years. Um, when did you launch the first time? 2018. Mm. Yeah, but I I was starting in 2010. I was like working on things, met different business people, met different partners, met so many suppliers. Every they time. Never gave up. Never gave up. Never gave up. Never That's ever. the key. That's no, the key. Never ever. That's the key. But I'm happy there was delays. You know, every time that it didn't work out, it was a blessing in disguise because it wasn't the right partner, you know? Exactly. So exactly. everything happens. Once you find the right per- partner that right. believes in so this everything. perfume, even more than you believe in mm-hmm. the perf- in yeah. the project, you're, you're, you know, you're, uh, you're on, one step on. On the right path. Yeah, yeah, totally. So for the last part, I want to get in deep. We're going to get personal. Yeah. Um, I'd love to start with relationships and a very important relationship. I know you opened up to me um, earlier. You mentioned that you lost your father at a very young age. You were 11 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to know how that helped shape you into the man you are today and um, probably made you grow up really young. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've lost them when I was 11 or 12 years old, like, like 12 or 11 years old. I don't, I don't really remember. Uh, because he has he had the sickness called uh, Alzheimer, mm. so he got it when he was fifty two, wow. around fifty two, and he died when he was fifty six. Mm. So uh, you know, I never had like you know, I lost my dad in a very, in, in a very important age. So becoming from a baby to a new t- in a teenager. So basically, I became that of myself so early because I used to, I used to see all of my friends having you know advices from their dad, and I didn't have it. Wow. So. And you had three sisters as well. And I had three mom. sisters. So you're you know, the man they, of the house at a very young age. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So being being a man, of the house at such a young age is it's something important. You know? It's something that I felt like uh, I wasn't a kid anymore. I wasn't a teenager anymore. I just yeah. switched from being a kid to being a man, you know. Right. So because I wanted to take care of my mom, I wanted to ki- take care of my sisters because they were young as well. So it's not easy because especially when you had the personality like your dad, which is uh, that everybody at 8 p.m., they, he wanted to have all around the table for dinner, we have very straight rules. I'm really, really jealous of my sister. So, when you lose a, a, you know, a personality like this in the house, is, you know, it's it's tough. You know, it's. Yeah. Uh, you feel them missing. Yeah. So, so yeah, powerful. Absolutely. So I grew up without a male figure because the only male figure I had was myself, wow. and I teached a lot of things to myself during the process. You know. And has that shaped you as a father today? Because I know you have two children. You have two sons, right? Yeah, I have two kids. Marcus and Brando is six and three years old. I mean, yeah. I really wanted to, like, the dad I am with them is is really traditional. I'm not trying to build up a friendship with them because Mm -hmm. I think it doesn't work uh, with the kids. I mean, I think that with the kids, you should, they should know that you're the father I, I have to know that he's my kid. Mm-hmm. Of course, we can play and everything. But never, you know, because I think that one of the mistakes, you know, uh, of parents today is building a relation, a friendship with the kids. Yeah. And I think that it doesn't work this because my dad, when he, I grew up in a good way, but my dad, when he used to look at me in the highs, so when I used to do something wrong. He put you in place. Oh my God, my blood <laughs> used to freeze inside, you know. <clears throat> now they all nag about how their kids are, but they don't do anything, you know, to fix the problem. To discipline them. You just take the car, just go, just go, just yeah. go. Yeah, takes I, a lot of work. You know, I remember that in the school, if I used to do something bad in the school, my dad used to shout at me. Yeah. 
today, if you do something good in the school, parents go and shout at the teacher. So this is not right, I right. think. Yeah. Thinking about myself. Yeah. So I just want to be a dad for them. I just want to be the dad that I never had for them. Mm -hmm. oh, that's beautiful. I'm sure you're doing a fantastic job. I'm trying to. Yeah, I know. It's a probably, I mean, I'm not a parent, but I always look at my friends who have children and even my own parents, and I'm like, you know, especially when, when Huda had children, when she had Noor, it made me realize it's the mm. toughest job How in old the is world. She? Noor is nine, um, but just seeing Huda struggle really made me realize, like, oh my gosh, it's, it's really a huge commitment. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to do it right yeah. is a lot of yeah. work. You're yeah, right. No. If you just want to spoil your kids, let them do whatever. It's easy. Yeah, even even this, you know, it can be something you know, spoil the kid. Like, I don't, I don't think it it happened. Although I have the opportunity to to buy them whatever they want, most of the mm -hmm. time I say no, mm -hmm. and I explain yeah. them why no. You want to teach them the value yeah. of yeah, because things. I have a lot of friends that they had dads mm -hmm. uh, back at the time, and they used to get whatever they wanted. And I used to say, why I can't have this? I was the same. Even though I had my dad, he couldn't Today, buy me anything. Exactly. <laughs> and I was like, ugh. <laughs> exactly. So today, I blessed my dad. Yeah. I blessed him. It builds that drive in you. Because the people that they used to get a lot, today they have no value of the money. That's very true. No value of the money. Or they're just not ambitious because yeah. they never worked hard for anything. For example, I would never buy a new car for my, for my kid when mm -hmm. he's 18. Uh, I remember the first car I had when I was 18, it was a very old Nissan yeah. uh, that I bought it for like 600 euros, yeah. 600 euros, wow. he had a <laughs> lot of kilometers, <laughs> but I bought it because I used to work as a waiter in the bar, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think I'm going to buy, for example, to make you understand the kind of yeah. that I am, to buy them a new car, yeah. because I want them to, you know, to work for what they want. Right. No, same here. Like, I don't know if I'll ever have children, but if I do, I want them to work. Like, of I worked, course. my first job was at 14 years old, and I started working, I earned everything on my own, and from then I never stopped working. There yeah. was a small period during university, which I yeah. finished, I didn't work, but my whole life I've been, I've been trained to think if I want anything, I have to earn it for myself. And I think of course. I was also sad as a child. I was like, I wish my dad could buy me things, but now it's yeah. a blessing. I'm like, it's a blessing. It made me work hard. It's a blessing because you can do things for your dad. Right. By That's your true. own work. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing more beautiful than this. That's true. It's nice to make me like to feel like I can repay them. Exactly. For all their hard work. Exactly. Even though they couldn't afford many things, they worked so Although hard. Although they cry, I want this, <laughs> I want that. And this. Yeah. Like, for me, uh, I don't care what you want. Yeah. I care yeah. more about teaching you something. You know? Absolutely. No, that's great. It's the because harder. I want to. I know. I want to create. A, grow up men's. I don't want to grow up. Boys. Boys. Yeah, we see a lot of them. Yeah. Boys, men who are spoiled, they act like children still. Yeah, men that yeah. maybe they're they are, for example, 40, 45 years old. They're still inside in clubs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are we talking about? Very true. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very true. Oh my gosh, where are the real men? I need to find them. No, no comment. Well, that's for another video. <laughs> um, I know you opened up to to me earlier about something which I was really impressed with you being so vulnerable. But you talked about depression, mm -hmm. and you mentioned that you had gone through depression, and you've done so much research to mm -hmm. really learn about psychology and different types of therapies. Um, I mean, I've always, even even before getting depression, I always was a very big fan of psychology. Mm -hmm. I've read a lot of books uh, about it. There's one author that I really like that is called Armando De Vincentis, which okay. is, by the way, became a very good friend of mine because wow. I had the opportunity to meet him. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a lot of books talking about psychology. What's psychology. Your favorite book? Uh, I pensieri della mente non ansiosa. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it means the thoughts of non-anxiety mind. Mm -hmm. And it's so, so interesting. Mm -hmm. So, so interesting. It helped me a lot. He wrote books talking about how to deal with money. Mm -hmm. So, psychology of the money. Mm -hmm. So, is, is an amazing, amazing, amazing author. And a very good friend of mine, by the way. Wow. Um, and I mean, did he help you? Did his books help you get through depression? Absolutely, yes. Mm. Absolutely, yes. I, I, I mean, like, see, depression is something very common. Mm -hmm. 
you know, but not everybody has the courage to talk about. Uh, personality like me, for example, might think like, for example, people might think, you know, of course he's strong, he's a movie star, he's a singer, he's an actor, he's a, uh, the face of gas, world wild, he looks strong, but right. why shouldn't I, you know, tell the, I'm a human being, you know, right. so I can be, I can be weak as well, I have my weakness. And that was one of my weakness. And the thing that I talk about my depression is, it was just to uh, be an example to all of these guys that they think they're strong and they don't talk about it. Because if I think, if I talk about it, many, many people can get the courage, you know, to, to deal with this kind of problem. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong about yeah. being depressed and yeah. tell that you're depressed and you need help. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong of ask for asking for help because by asking help, you can, you, you can tell people how much you love yourself. Right. Because you want to be good. Yeah. You don't want to struggle inside depression. No, I think you're so right. I never thought about it, but I think, I think you're right. M probably more people are depressed than we even know about, but people are just aren't saying it. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I feel like every time I get close to someone and they get really deep and open up, like mm -hmm. it, it shows that they've gone through really hard times, but a lot of people pretend like, they're fine. They're, they're fine. Not. They're yeah. fine, but they're not. Right. But why, if you're not fine, you're pretending to be fine? Yeah. I mean, just okay, break down. Right. You know, get your crisis, but tell the people so at least you can get in help. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to be like this forever. You know, yeah. I didn't want it to get be depressed forever. That's why I open up mm -hmm. and say, hey guys, you know, like yeah, three hundred massimo, three hundred and sixty-five days. Massimo is Massimo, Michele is Michele. Right. You know, I want to be good, I want to ask for help. There's nothing bad about it. And it, by the way, it's sexy. Yeah, <laughs> is it? It's sexy. Oh, I'm going to start asking for help more. <laughs> yeah, Just ask for help. Yeah, sometimes like, of course I have my moments. I do think I'm a very sensitive person, so like sometimes small things can throw me mm -hmm. off, but I always feel like I have to act strong to make everybody else be okay. So mm -hmm. I think I need to work on that. Just I know someone vulnerable. who's like this. Really? <laughs> Yeah, you know that the, the people that they kill themselves to help other ones, mm -hmm. and it's totally, um, totally fine, mm -hmm. because I kill myself to help the people I love. Mm -hmm. But in the same time, <clears throat> I love myself. Right. So I would never help someone knowing that I'm not good with myself. You know, That's because I, otherwise, how can I help someone right. in a put good way? First. For yourself first mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. self-love yeah, yeah. isn't selfish that's like yeah, my yeah. mantra of 2020 <laughs> yeah yeah no totally what would you what advice would you give to someone who is feeling depressed uh, starting to feeling depressed mm -hmm. like just go straight away to talk just get a, a good psychiatrist um, psychiatrist yeah. psychology not psychology psych um, psychiatrist no, uh, psychotherapist. Okay. Just get a good psychotherapist. Mm. Open up with them, mm. because psychologist is something. Mm. So you open up, yeah. you open up, and that's it. Psychotherapy is something else. You open up, and the psychotherapy tells you, gives you the weapons against the depression. Mm. Then uh, there's. Uh, it's a combo. It's a mixed between, uh, you know, medicine. But you cannot use medicine only because otherwise it's just if you take your garbage and you put under the carpet. Right. I mean, the shit is still there, but you can't see it. Mm -hmm. So I you need the psycho, psych, uh, you need yeah. a psychotherapy because the psychotherapy helps you to take out the garbage mm -hmm. under the carpet. You know, mm -hmm. so you open up, you talk yeah. about your problem. But you know, uh, I'm more into psychotherapy than into medication mm -hmm. you know what I mean medication yeah. they they make a, they give you a very big help but if you don't discover why you have the problem yeah. just, it just it just chemic inside it totally no, I just agree chemic you. inside your head mm -hmm. good advice um, yeah hopefully anybody who's watching reaches out to people and gets help because I agree with you I think it's absolutely. so important absolutely I want to move on to more fun things <laughs> Let's do so it. what is your um, what is your five-year goal? Where do you hope to be in five years? 
I would like to have a Oscar in my hand. <laughs> I have no doubts. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah, sure I mean, you I, will. <laughs> like I re like, I wish I can like can and build my my future. You know, mm -hmm. today I just wanna I just wanna keep working as I'm doing because it's the right thing to do now. Yeah. I don't wanna overdo it. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna buy expensive cars, expensive house. I don't wanna do anything of this. Mm -hmm. I just wanna keep working as I'm doing yeah. because this is the right thing to grow up. Mm -hmm. better and better and faster mm -hmm. absolutely and it's it's just so evident that you're doing everything because of your passion not because of what you get from it mm -hmm. which is so great because i think yeah. when you follow your passions truly just because of what you exactly. love everything else will follow and, and and plus i mean you should never forget where you come from absolutely. because if you're, if you forget where you come from it means that uh you had no 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 any more values mm -hmm. to the work that you're doing so keep remember where you come from yeah because this had value to the man you want to be right. you know what i mean you, mm -hmm. you know what i mean absolutely as but not all, only as a businessman as an actor as, as a father mm -hmm. as a as a boyfriend mm -hmm. you know yeah this has been so much fun um i just want to end our video because every video i do i end with a quote um so what's your favorite quote <laughs> quote <laughs> yeah like you're saying that you say your mantra like something that inspires you live your life and let the other people live the life that they want yeah don't judge for yourself don't judge others and don't let other people's opinions don't judge, judge and don't get judged yeah yes. exactly no i love that that's amazing just feel free that's amazing i love that well thank you so much Michele. it's thank been you, such an honor thank you having you and too. also just getting to know you as a person and spending time with you has been a real honor of thank you very much well, it was person. an honor to be here with you today. thank you so much good thank luck you. with your podcast thank you so much everyone we're gonna link down below i'm sure you're all already following Michele, but just in case make sure you check out the links below um and i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast and look forward to seeing all Michele's new projects um we love you guys so much thank, thank you very you. much bye, bye. <laughs>